Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and in this tutorial, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. We're going to be jumping into Blender. So in this tutorial, we're going to be predominantly using Blender. We're going to be creating a custom object. It's going to be for a studio backdrop. We're then going to export that from Blender, import it into Dimension. Now, I know what you're thinking, Dan, I've never used Blender before. That's fine. I'm learning it too. I'm going to walk you through the steps to create this backdrop. If you don't want to follow along, that's absolutely fine. You can download the final file in the video description. But without further ado, we're going to jump into it now and get started. Rightio, so first of all, we're going to start in Dimension. So we have a plane here. I can use this to create a flat surface, but I need something that curves up to create a nice soft backdrop. So we've got a few different starter assets here. You can download more on Adobe Stock. We have this cloth backdrop here, which is uh, which is very nice. We just press F, we can zoom to that. But you may not want the cloth texture in the background. And there's a few other shapes down here. I've used this one before, the half pipe. You can press F to zoom to this, and you can manipulate this as well. However, for me personally, I have a very specific idea for a backdrop in mind. And what I'm going to do is create this in another piece of 3D software and then show you how you can bring that into Dimension. And we're going to be doing this with Blender. So if I just switch over to Blender, this is a free download, by the way, so you can go and download this now if you'd like to have a go. Blender has been around for a while. It has an incredibly large learning curve <laughs> compared to something like Dimension, but it is an incredibly powerful tool as well. So don't worry if you are new to Blender or you've never used it before. I'm still very new myself, so I'm learning a lot of different things. But we're going to go through this together. And the first thing that we're going to do is just switch off the camera and the light in our scene. So we have a cube left here. I can select this, right click, and well, we'll delete that because we don't need the cube. Now, a quick intro on the camera controls. If you have a mouse, you can press the middle mouse button and move around to adjust the camera so you can orbit. You can then hold down shift and use this with the middle mouse button to pan or command or control to zoom in or out. It's a little bit strange at first and it's different to dimension. So when you jump backwards and forwards between the two, it does get a little bit confusing. But what we're going to do is quickly create a new plane. And we can do this by pressing shift A. We'll go to mesh and we'll select plane. I can then press S on the keyboard. That's a shortcut for scale. I'll make this nice and big. And then what I'm going to do is press tab on the keyboard or go up here and switch from object mode into edit mode. And in edit mode, I have this option here where I can select a vertex or an individual point or corner. We've got this next one, which is edge. So I can select individual edges or this one here which is faces, so I can select the face. And the shortcuts for these are one, two, and three, respectively. So I can press number two to select edges. And I'm gonna click on this back edge here. We'll just spin the camera around and zoom out. And then what I'm going to do is press E on the keyboard. This is for extrude. If I just bring this down, you'll see it will extrude this up and in all kinds of different directions. However, if while it's extruding, I press Z, it will snap that to the Z axis. So we're going up. So you can see where I'm going with this. You can make this as high as you like. And what I could even do is I could click on this edge here and I could extrude this along the X axis. Or what I can do is with that edge selected, I can press G, which is the shortcut for the move tool. And again, it's going all over the place. But if I press X afterwards, it will only move along the X axis. The X axis is the red. Y is the green and blue that you can't see is the Z axis, essentially up and down. OK, so now I'm going to select this. We have a very kind of squared off backdrop. This might create like a horizontal line or a horizon in your scene that you might not want. So we can smooth this out. So with this edge selected, we can press Command or Control and B. That's the shortcut for the bevel tool. And we can bring this up. And then what you can do is you can actually scroll the middle mouse button to add or remove more curves. Now, the more complex you make the shape, the more detail it's going to have, but the larger the file size might be and it might slow down your renders a little bit. So find a balance between detail and whatever the opposite of detail is. But I think something like this will look pretty good. 
So I can just click to set that. Now down here, you get this option. So you can go in and adjust the segments there as well if you, for whatever reason, don't have the ability to scroll a middle mouse button. And you can adjust a few other parameters there as well. If we click off, that option goes. So this is final now. And then what we can do is press tab or switch back from edit mode to object mode. We can right click the shape and select shade smooth. And it just smooths out that shape a little bit there. So we've got a, we've got a pretty good backdrop now. Now we can press S, we could scale this or we could press Y and scale it along the Y axis so you can make that backdrop even wider. So there we go, that's pretty good. You could make that curve much bigger if you wanted, depending on the type of backdrop that you'd like. However, I think we're good here. I'm just gonna export this now. So go to File, go to Export, make sure you have the object selected. Now there's a few formats that Dimension supports, things like FBX, OBJ. I found that it's the easiest using STL, so I'm gonna click this, and then you can save this to a location on your computer. Check Selection Only. You can adjust the scale, but I'm gonna leave that as is and scale it up in Dimension. No idea what these other options do. Click Export and it will save this to your specified location. And then we can jump back into Dimension. Here's one I prepared earlier. We'll go up to File, down to Import, select 3D Model. I've got my backdrop and I'll bring this in. And it's brought it in at a very strange angle. And I've now got to remember the difference in controls between Blender and Dimension. So what I'm gonna do first of all is just snap this to the ground plane here. And then press R on the keyboard and hold shift to rotate this 90 degrees. Again, snap to the ground plane. And then with the shape selected, press F to zoom the camera to it. And I'm gonna turn on real-time rendering. And there we go, we can now go and place a product on there. Let's just give that a different color so you can actually see it. So there we go, we have our backdrop and we can go and place a product on there. And you get a nice smooth backdrop without any kind of harsh horizon line or any fabric details in the background, just a nice smooth curve. In fact, we can go and mock this up right now. I'll just do this very quickly. We'll grab a coffee cup. We'll place that on there. I'll just turn off rendering for the moment. Whoa, that is giant. Let's bring that down in size. Or you can scale up your backdrop, whichever one works for you. F to zoom, such a, such a nifty little feature. And there we go. So I can position this like so. We'll turn on rendering and you'll see that backdrop is nice and smooth. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, but you don't want to download Blender and go through that process, don't worry. You can download the STL file for the backdrop and I'll link it in the video description. And there we go, so that was fun, right? A little crack at using Blender. As I say, it's very new for me. Uh, maybe it's new for you, maybe you're a pro. I've got no idea, but if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more Blender tutorials, do let me know down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.